All right, good afternoon, YouTube. Fair face with you today. Still out here with Hermit. Figured I'd uh, maximize my time with you guys looking at his ass. So, um, yeah, he's uh, not uh, not on camera. Not I'm. I'm gonna. You know, I think one of these days I'll get him. I'll get him back on that dual vlog life. I think uh, I'll be playing the role of Ned. But um, for now, today I wanted to do a video on. Uh, Things I hate about the beta in a kind of standalone format. And uh, I was gonna name, number it out, but I have no idea really um, how many I, things I do hate. But uh, my number one thing that I hate about beta, at least right now, is the way that this back end of the RRS bikes are done, to include the 2020s. Uh, it hangs out there, and a lot of other bikes do it too, I get it, it's not just beta, but it hangs out there like a floppy dong, you know? Like, and, and, and like, it's, when you watch it on video, like, you can see that thing going every which way. And, uh, out at Mosquito Pass, I, uh, I uh, knocked one of the signals off by just from, from bouncing, you know? It just flew right off. And, uh, I hate that, like... You know, I get it, there are rules and regulations for signals and whatever, whatnot, but there's gotta be a better solution for the manufacturers than that. And they gotta know people that buy these bikes obviously ride them. So why not make a solution that everybody in the whole community doesn't complain about knocking their damn signals off the first time they ride? So that's that's my first gripe. And uh, it's not even a it's not even really a bad one. It doesn't really affect the functionality of the bike a whole lot. My next one is uh, fuel mileage. That is definitely my next one. Um, these are high-end bikes and I get it a lot of the uh, KTMs and everything else. They all get crappy fuel mileage. But this thing on its best day, at most, will do 40 miles to the gallon. What? Yeah, so Hermit was just saying this two-stroke does that. And he's right. Like this thing in its high power map is horrendous. And if you switch to the low power map, you might get, you might get uh, maybe five miles to the gallon. It's uh, not much difference. Um, so I guess, you know, I get it. We want the power and stuff, but I am sure that there's a way to tune this bike through EFI that makes it get much better fuel economy for like, you know, longer stints, the dual sporters, maybe you're on the road. Maybe you're just on a dirt road and you don't need all the power and fuel. Maybe beta, you guys could make a fuel saver map to where like maybe you could get DRZ 400, like 60 mile per gallon type fuel economy. That would be awesome. So in its stock form, the two gallon tank is really too small to do any real dual sporting, 100%. I ran out of gas. Well, and the engine wasn't broken, but I ran out of gas at 75 miles. Two gallons of gas. Um, and really, the best I would ever even think about going with that bike is 85 miles with a stock tank. So, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not really doable for a lot of the loops that I do in the Colorado Springs area. So, that's the reason why either a three gallon or four gallon IMS tank is required. So, what I wish Beta would do for the RRS line, put the three gallon tank on it from the factory. I think you'd make a lot of dual sporters really happy about that. The RRS line is not for the race guys. It's for us dual sport guys. The, uh, the stock fuel elbow that comes on the uh, stock gas tank is plastic. It has a quick disconnect on it with a hose um, and but the problem is that hose gets caught on everything when you're pulling this tank out of here so uh, all it takes is for that hose to get caught on something you snap that fuel elbow it is that easy like Meeker Extreme and I put little pressure on it we snapped it the new plastic one is 40 bucks the new aluminum one is $45 why the hell did Beta not put an aluminum one on there to begin with? I don't know. That is annoying. But if you go down the Beta forms for the EFI's, Betas, that's pretty much what everybody says to replace. So next kind of sort of complaint would be uh, 
And I actually, it's funny because I really like the Voyager, uh, the Trail Tech Voyager. It's actually kind of coming handy today. But, uh, uh, it, it's got a small screen and uh, actual trail functionality is kind of limited. Oh, blew that turn. So, I don't uh, think that beta should necessarily uh, outright replace, but I think they should give the option from the factory to get the Trail Tech Voyager Pro. I mean, you're already working with the company. How hard could that be? Get your customers a little discount for a, a device that, in my opinion, is 10 times better. I think that would just be a good option to have. But ultimately not a big deal. Oh, another complaint that I have for the RRS models. Now, and I get this comes down to the dealer and maybe some dealers do it, but the uh, um, balance the wheels from the factory. It's a dual sport and a plated bike, please. These come with rim locks and they are so out of balance. Pretty much anything over 30 is absolutely miserable. Like, come on, Beta, like encourage your dealers at least balance them for free. Apex Sports tried to charge me a hundred bucks just to balance the damn wheels. Like, that's no bueno. Uh, that's kind of a necessary thing. I mean, maybe a lot of the dirt bike beta guys will disagree, but uh, I think even on the trails, I don't like out of balance wheels either, so. All right, Hermit, you got any complaints about this bike outside of those? Oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I've gotten used to it, so, yeah. So I said they made a bike for regular people and a kickstand for midgets. <laughs> uh, and it's true, the kickstand is horrible, and uh, I'm told they kind of sort of fixed this for the 2020s. Uh, they basically just put the extended base on it. But uh, what the hell, Beta? Like, seriously, at what point did you think this freaking kickstand was a good idea? Like. It sinks into everything. It's way too short. And uh, yeah, like, I don't know. And, and a lot of European bikes are that way. But I mean, that's one thing from the Japanese you could learn to figure out. Um, I, oh, I think Beta should consider for the RRS line especially, maybe a like <laughs> a dual sport maintenance interval and a race interval. Cause I feel like their, their maintenance intervals are very, you know, race bike heavy like uh for oil changes for valves and stuff like that like some of us pansies that buy these bikes and you know we don't really ride them as hard as someone racing them i don't think we need to be changing the oil every 30 hours but you know i maybe i'm wrong about that but from what i've seen in the community uh I, there's not a lot of uh reliability issues about the engine in the first place regardless of how people take care of them um oh uh, yeah i guess uh maybe i'll finish with this one i i know you wanted to use uh or beta wanted to use uh high-end liquids oils whatever else but the coolant that they picked is uh a lot of people have had coolant issues with these bikes that are pretty much directly related to uh the coolant itself so uh from what I understand from reading online, this coolant likes to expand long before it boils and uh, it'll dump some out. I actually just had this happen at Mosquito Pass and um, on the 500 RRS that uh, Mark had, he pretty much claimed of, or complained of almost always having uh, coolant leaks. Not leaks, but uh, it, would, uh, it would dump the coolant out onto the skid plate and of course you'd see a puddle later. And I also know that the, t the uh, two-stroke versions had a uh, uh, a ring basically that would blow past um, and you would, would over pressurize the coolant system which was another big problem um, I guess that was easily remedied by beta and they took care of people so seem, people seem to be pretty happy with that but overall just use a 50-50 mix like pre-stone or whatever else save a few bucks on the bikes get your profit margins back I don't think coolant, coolant like that uh, is really going to matter in that way. Freestone, I don't know. Is that what it's called? I don't know. 
Press down. Okay. Yeah, Herman's right. All right, guys. I think I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, we're going to find some new stuff to get into. And, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the betas. If you have one, uh, let me know if you're going, uh, what you dislike about it in the comments below. And uh, like, share my videos. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Third face out.